two, one. at the lunar module. Oh. <laughs> right here. Huh? All right. I don't know why it shows you frozen. We are froze up a little bit. Technical difficulty here. <laughs> Sorry, folks. We're, uh, there we go. All right. Sorry for a little technical glitch there. Welcome. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, we are back for another episode of Blue Collar Green Pockets. Uh, we have a treat for you tonight. It's one of my favorite nights, electrical. Uh, so I'll be wearing two hats. Uh, I'm Jeff Brett, one of your hosts, along with, as always, uh, Chuck Wilson. And tonight, Dave's back. Uh, he, he missed us last week. So Dave Jones, glad uh, you got your computer stuff straight. Um, and we have a special guest, uh, Brian Howe. He's coming to us from Roseville, Michigan. He's been a 26-year-long member of the IBEW, which is union. Uh, we're going to start with Brian. He's going to tell us a little bit about himself and how he got into uh, the electrical trade. So, Brian, the floor is yours. Excellent. How is everybody doing tonight? Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning or good evening, Brian. <laughs> good evening to you, sir. Nice yes, to meet sir, you, Brian. Nice to meet everybody here. Everybody's brothers and sisters in the electrical field, one way or another. The big big piece of pie and there's a lot of slices to it so let's get to it tonight my name's uh brian Hall. like i said i'm living northern suburbs of detroit i'm a local ibw 58 member for 26 years outstanding member i'm currently now working at uh mac paint for fca i'm a foreman there on a crew for uh, lake erie electric out of ohio great bunch of guys and uh here we are today. It's awesome, awesome to be here, and uh, we uh, keep kicking it out every day. What up? I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, Brian, so how long have you been in? Did you go, I mean, did you come through the union? I mean, how did you get into this field? Actually, when I got into it, I was, really, I was a mover back then, and I was just looking for something different, and one of my friends, uh, working non-union, of course, uh, brought me in. Would you say you were a mover? Well, I was a mover, believe it or not. Well, at six foot five, it was kind of an easy trade, but, you know, oh, yeah. but I wanted something different, you know, instead of breaking my back every single day, you know, but uh, my friend uh, wanted me to come on, uh, Larry Roberts, and uh, he uh, brought me in with a company called Budget Electric here out of Detroit, and uh, I started out in the residential and worked my way up, and then actually I joined into another company that was organized into the local here. And that's how I got organized then. I mean, it was uh, pretty much about that. But, you know, our uh, local here and unions all offer a, uh, a trade schooling that everyone could go to and take the apprenticeship program and go through and learn the steps and work at the same time and make a heck of a lot of money and not worry about any type of other debts that you could occur going through college or anything like that or even outside trade schools. It doesn't matter, but as long as you got the schooling behind you, the schooling leads to the licensing, and once you get the license, you can go anywhere you want to. Sky's the limit. So and how many back. years have you been, been involved with it? Uh, 26 years now, sir. Yes. Wow. Long time. That sounds like, a, sounds like a long career. Sounds like another career that uh, we're going to talk to you about that, that we've had you know, a lot of different careers we've done here uh, previous to you. And one of the things we like – about careers is the fact that they're they have a lot of fingers to them as far as a lot of different avenues you could go down like in electrical it seems like you know you could get a guy that's going out and he's bending pipe in a to, to build a football stadium for instance instance and then you could also have somebody that's going down the road and just and just wiring houses um have you done all of that i mean was is there a specialty you have i have been 
through everything. I've been through the ringer, you could say. I started out in residential, went to commercial, and to industrial. Then I went right directly to foundry work. I've worked in Edison plants. I've worked right off of the transformer or the actual generator from actual Bell River, which is right just north of us here. I've done things that are just totally amazing and you know, and like a lot of things that a lot of normal electricians would never get to see. I mean, some of these projects that the unions do take on to help out the power companies and the stadium buildings, and then also within our area is all of the automobile factories. And there yeah, so are you've, done, of them. you've done like shutdowns and things like that you've probably been involved in, which has to be very, very orchestrated, right? Oh, yes, sir. And we're talking <clears throat> three to 10 different companies on a job site with hundreds of men. Right now, my my company with Lake Erie and also Conti Electric, Motor City Electric, Shaw Electric are all just some of the people that are just on our job site. Each one of us have our own certain part of the pie that we all specialize in and we all bring it together all together at one time and bring it in on budget and on time. Well, that sounds like a good team there. Chuck, you look like you want to say something, although I can't yeah, see I was, you on the uh, uh, <laughs> You can always tell when I, my, my mind is doing uh, some spinning. Uh, anyway, uh, Dave, uh, and I'm familiar with uh, you know, some of what the unions uh, provide as far as training and so on, uh, and, and some really well done uh, organization toward developing the skills and keeping uh, members you know, in at the leading edge of the skills. How would you, uh, and just based on your background and what you see going on sort of outside of the unions, which, um, what would you say is the difference in the type of work that uh, is more union oriented versus, you know, the, you know, the, the, the open market kind of thing? That's Brian I was referring yeah. to. Yeah, Brian, that's for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I think in between the two, it's you're still out there and you're still learning the trade. This is what we're talking about. We don't want people going out and sticking their necks out there and taking on all these financial loans and putting those hardship on their family to go out and go get a, a degree that most people don't even get a chance to even work in that field that they have a degree in. My brother Cliff is a baseball coach he graduated from wayne state university with an electrical engineer's degree he should be having my job that i have today yeah but today and, he is the he is the baseball coach for macomb community college and you're making significantly more than he is uh yes sir last uh last year i was in well actually the last three years i was in six digits yes sir yeah and I that's mean, not including all the you know since we're all electricians and we're all friends here, you know, we even go out, we take care of, you know, friends and family. I call it peace work, work sometimes, but, you know, this is what we are and this is what we do. So Very good. I go out and I help out people too, you know, people in the community, keep everybody safe, everybody happy, and uh, keep living life day by day. I just want to quick get throw up. We finally, uh, another guest just joined us in, driving down the road. He's, uh, looks like he's still on the clock there. Can, can you, who, 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 do we, who do we got joining in here? Looks like uh, Jimmy Don. <laughs> hey, what's up, Dave? What's up, Jimmy? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm still working. Not not really hard working, not. just catching up a little bit. So, yeah. so. you guys hear me okay? Yeah, you sound great. Oh, 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 oh okay. Yeah, hey, well, I, I came in a little late. Did I, did I miss anything? Oh, we were holding up for you. Oh, well, thank you. I, I feel like royalty right now. <laughs> Jim, we were just kind of talk, talking about how uh, how you got into doing electrical work, starting out there. Well, uh, Kentucky, uh, uh, Dave, I'm, I'm going to hit on Delaware a little bit. But go go you remember, ahead, man. Uh, Clyde, you know, headed up the Sussex County Electrical uh, yeah. Association. Remember that when it first oh, yeah. started? Well, uh, when I moved to Kentucky, Kentucky had no electrical lights. Wow, that, is, is that me? Yes. No, that wasn't him. Huh? Okay. That was me. Okay. Oh. And um, 
So anybody could do electrical for a while. And um, then the state come down and mandated you have to have an electrical license and such. And so, uh, yeah, I applied. I had my time in. Am I still on? Yes, yes, yes you're doing you're fine. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I applied. I had my time in and was grandfathered in. And that, I know that sounds strange, but that's how I got my electrical license. And what I use my electrical license for is basically for my business, my refrigeration, heating, and air. If if I go out on the job, we, we will quote the job. We'll do what we have to do. The electrical license taken care of. And during the slow times, it's also a good little perk to be able to go in and do upgrades to places. And uh, th this sounds strange. Um, Dave, you know, I, I, I like elect, uh, commercial refrigeration. Well, I've turned this into going into sewer plants and redoing electrical and sewer plants and wiring up lift stations, pumps, whatever they have. I'm on both ends of the uh, food cycle now. I, I do the refrigeration and I take care of it when it comes out now. And th that's basically <laughs> has to do, yeah. It basically has to deal with the controls. You know, uh, you get a good feeling on controls. And uh, Dave, this goes back to back in the day when we had to get stuff running. You had to get stuff running. And you learn controls really fast. And uh, th that's that's basically what I, what I do now. We'll go in, we'll quote a job with all the electric. And... Uh, and I do lift stations to sewer plants and I make good money at it. So I'm not doing that tonight. I'm going back to turn this walk in on. I've got T Foster. <laughs> so, so what's but, what has melted there? Well, we'll find out. It's been fifty degrees all day, so I figured I'm out already out of that uh that you know, they should have called it sooner. Um uh, yeah. So well, you got a big truck there now, Jimmy? Uh, I've got a Ford Transit. Uh, yeah, it's it's a horse. It's got rid a, of that minivan, huh? <laughs> uh, I got rid of it, man. I can haul everything now, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it, baby. <laughs> you know, I was I was telling these guys, Jimmy, a couple couple shows ago. I forget what our topic was, but I was telling them. You remember the old like food right stores, the Rain Brothers, the food right stores. Yes. And I, yes. There was that one down in Dagsburg or Selbyville somewhere. And anyway, I remember going down there working, and uh, the guy took me outside and he said, "I need you to come look at something." He took me to his car wash. He had a coin-operated car wash, and he said, "No." I've done can... work on them. I've right. done work hey, on them. I used, to own, I used to own a car wash. So. Well, you know what I mean. It's all control. So he took me in there. He said, "Dave, nobody can fix this, but whenever you come down and fix my refrigeration, all the stuff looks the same to me." And I said, buddy, his name was Buddy. I said, buddy, tell me how it works. Just tell me what happens here. And I ended up doing all his car wash work there, <laughs> reluctantly, but I did it anyway. I told him, look, I'm not doing this after hour. Don't call me at, don't call me Saturday at noon because somebody can't get the soap off their car or whatever's going on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but it's here's something that's another thing you don't think about. Dry cleaners. A dry cleaning system is nothing but a refrigeration unit with chemicals. There you go. That dry cleaner work. I had to pull over because if I go down the road five miles, I'll lose perception. <laughs> Welcome to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kentucky. Brian, Brian, do you get involved in much controls uh, up there with, with what you're doing? I have done a, a lot of busman work for a lot of uh, grocery store chains here in the Detroit area. Yeah, we we have a lot of people do that, and with the controls, not only also with the power, it's a uh, it's definitely neat, you know, uh, combining the two and making sure that everything comes out right and things turn on when they're supposed to, and lights and cameras, and it's a it's a it's a heck of a task, let me tell you, but. It takes a lot of time and a lot of experience. And I can tell all these gentlemen here have uh, all that involved. Yeah, and it's just kind of every, every every show we do, we always talk about the different paths. And with electrical, it's one thing that, I mean, there's just I there's just so many paths you can go down once you learn electrical and controls. 
Um, oh, that was just like what uh, Dave was saying there. Uh, I think that was his name. I'm sorry if it isn't, okay. but uh, yeah, there's, like I said, when we started, there's many slices of the pie and a lot of people can specialize in just one little sliver and still make a good living at it. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of different fields, you know, that are supplied by electrical and, you know, there's a lot more still to be discovered yet. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, for me, for electrical wise, I got started really young. Uh, my grandfather, he was uh, uh, owner of Rogers Electrical. He owned, and he was uh, he was an electrician, but he developed Parkinson's disease. So I was right. Yeah, an electrician Parkinson's disease is not a good combination. Mm. Um, <laughs> or or colorblind's not good either. Uh, no, no, that oh, was oh. now. Listen, we had we had one of those too. We'll get into that guy. But uh, oh, so, uh, so, my, so my grandfather, he was very good with controls and, and all that. Um, you know, he went um, through a union and everything. Um, and then he started his own company. But I would be, you know, 12, 13 years old riding around with him. He, you know, he'd be getting his little, his little side hustle on. And um, he'd go to grab a screwdriver in the panel, you know, and he's literally sorry, get my hand in there. Hold a screwdriver, you know, going to the panel. <laughs> I couldn't handle it, so. I was 13 working in live panels by myself because I just had to push them to the side. And that's kind of how I got involved in the electrical trade. Um, God bless you. God bless you. Learned old school. Yes. Yeah, you know, hey, hey, Jimmy, what you said earlier about that um, electrical license, just a little bit of trivia here. My dad was in the refrigeration business back in the 50s and 60s and early 70s before he passed away. But he, he back then, that's when the Delaware came out with the electrical licenses. So when they came out with the electrical licenses, they had a problem because the guys doing refrigeration didn't have a license. So there was all these problems with the refrigeration guys were going out and they were walking away from stuff. Because now they had this electrical license and they were afraid to touch it. So they turned around in Delaware and gave all the refrigeration guys electrical licenses. Just gave them to them. Master electrical right. license. Huh. Just so they could do the work. Yeah, because they right. It was becoming very confusing. You know, that's pretty much what they did in Kentucky, and I hate to say that, but uh, the inspectors are smart enough to know, and we do out. And I will say this. Uh, Jimmy, you got a hill you can ride up to there? I got, <laughs> I got a I got a little Put in yourself, reception. Okay, make yourself an antenna hey, hat. Turn, turn that thing on and get right up to the top of the nearest mountain because you're out no, of here right now. And you're getting, getting know, low know with the codes. What do you say? We, we lost them. Hey, Jeff. Yes, sir. So, what? Hey, can you hear the word? <laughs> what do you say? I don't know. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Jimmy, ride somewhere high. Get up, get up somewhere high there, Jeb. On your in your in your line of work, yes, so sir. you started back at the panel basically. Well, and, and you guys work on hot food equipment, okay? So yeah, Dave. Um, I had, you know, like I said, I got I got interested in electrical very young. Um, at the time I was in high school though, uh, is right when the whole EPA thing was happening with the with the EPA car and refrigerant and everything. Yeah, so, I was 45 when that happened. Yeah, well, I was I was 16, 16 when it started, 17. So I actually um, went to Votech for refrigeration air conditioning. And um, I actually got my EPA card before my teacher did, so I like to give him a hard time about that. But when I got out of Votech, um, I got, you know, did the work release, you know, where I got out of school half a day, worked for Florida Heat Pump, uh, a place work, working work on release. Florida Heat Pumps. Yep. Work, <laughs> work release. release. That's what I called it because school was jail to me. I could not get out of there <laughs> fast enough. It was just, it was just affecting my pocketbook. So I wanted to, so I call it work release. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I ended up going to work for my grandfather's company a year later. And then uh, one of the guys that was working there in the electrical field, he, he, Lured me over to his side and uh, Danny Mills. He was supposed to be on tonight, but he bailed on me. So thanks, Dad. Um, he had me digging, bending pipe, you know, electrical 101. Brian knows all about it. Uh, I, so I definitely came up the hard way. And that's how I got electrical, which, as Dave said, turned into hot side, cold side, food, refrigeration, air conditioning, all controls. Controls was my specialty. And anything with controls, I, I don't care what it is. I'll, I'll dive right in. 
So, but now you guys even work on hot food equipment, right? Oh, tons of, we do fryers, refrigeration, ice cream machines. If anybody's ever seen an ice cream machine, they're a nightmare. Um, yeah. Ice ice machines, night, you know, they're, they're nothing compared to an ice cream machine. Jimmy was actually pretty good with ice cream machines. Okay. Right, Jimmy? Um, you're talking those frozen dog machines. Yeah, Jimmy's so, muted. Jimmy, you're muted. You gotta unmute yourself, buddy. I that was that, that was us, Dave. We we muted him. Mm. You muted Jimmy. <laughs> our tech our tech support muted Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy. I'm gonna send him a, I'm gonna send him a six pack of dogfish for the next time we have him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we do a lot of lighting controls, all that good stuff. Basically, basically anything as you see the truck behind me. That's pretty much. We're not scared. Yeah, well, it all ties in, right? It does. That's why I said if you get a strong electrical, you know, you've actually been taught and you know your codes and you're safe, um, I think you can go anywhere with it. Yeah. The ship goes hey. one way and payday's on Tuesday. There you go. Hey, Brian, <laughs> Brian, what's your, if you had one drop dead thing and they came to you and said, you get to choose what you want to do in our field, what would you do? Primary, primary terminations, 13 and 2. Define that for, the audience, Brian. Big stuff. Oh, uh, this is this is a little bit more than the average electricians get to deal with. These are voltage ranges that from MRD cable that ranges within 500 PCM, which is 400 amps of 13,200 volts. So this cook so your chicken in a heartbeat, and half the other people that are standing within a 10 foot radius of you. So you really have to be on top of your game with uh, safety and knowing what you're doing and taking the proper steps and procedures to make sure that the equipment is going to run flawlessly. But that's what I would do. I would definitely be into the uh, primary systems. Those are, those are things I think are the funnest out of all of them. So you never had to pull the 500 by hand then you've always had a machine. Well, of course, we've got a little bit smarter. Not like some of us in the room that may have uh, had to use horses before. Man, we didn't, we didn't have any of those any of those fancy contraptions. It was it was all back. Well, we used anything necessary, and believe me, at six foot five, I was always on the pulling end for some reason. I, I believe. Hey, Brian, you ever seen a refrigeration mechanic bend bend EMT? Uh, <laughs> no, I'd like to give him a stick of rigid though and see how he does. <laughs> I don't think it's bending. I think it's more rolling. I think they do I more rolling. Like, I always took like three sticks with me. Lots of couplings. <laughs> case, yeah. All, always pressure. Always foot pressure. I remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's yeah. pretty good with yep. I'm too good with EMT. Well, that, oh, you guys get to reminisce about your electrical backgrounds, Bob. Uh, I grew up uh, doing electrical uh, work, you know, just sort of uh, on a grunt end. Chuck, this doesn't include like plugging in a lamp or something. Like that. I mean, with his oh, hair, I thought, I thought oh, he was never Christmas cut. lights. Christmas never lights. mind. Greg, <laughs> Greg, Greg, show me your hand. Fist bump. <laughs> Dave, I, is. Dave, I thought he was going to tell us about the time he got struck by lightning and his hair turned oh white. Oh my God. It was a long time. I was going to fill my cup back up. It's platinum, by the way, not white. So but... tell us your story, Chuck. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I did grow up in. Uh, uh, yeah, doing all sorts of things, including doing all the drilling through the, uh, the, the, the stud walls and running all the wires so that the, you know, the electrician that knew something could uh, uh, do his thing. But I was my, my first job as a, as a naval officer, I was the electrical officer on a ship. And so I had the electricians working for me along with the I seamen, the interior communications folks. And so being uh, involved with all of the electrical safety and so on, and on ship, nobody touched anything electrical without you know rubber gloves on. And there was a rubber mat. And uh, it was just all kinds of uh, smart stuff. But uh, in, in all the... Uh, tag out programs that we had in place so that people wouldn't get injured or killed as they were doing their jobs and so now i i kind of do a tag out program when i'm working on something i'll uh, put tape over the uh <laughs> even if i'm the only one there i put tape over top of the uh, the breaker over the electrical switch or it, so on in order to protect myself but uh, 
anyway, that's my personal story I just had to tell. Brian, Brian he just uh, made me think about something too. You're in Michigan, so y'all have to conduit all your residential, correct? Yes, sir. All yes, in the do. walls, conduit, man. Well, you're well, like, well, you're well, residential. Not mostly conduit. Piece. They still let us use uh, non-metallic in, in certain circumstances. You know, they're, they're looking more into the fire rating and they're taking a little bit of... Uh, I want to say uh, the shadow of Chicago area like that, but it's yeah. still, you know, we're, we're still pulling a lot of Romex over here, you know, in residential areas and locations like that. But, you know, I've, I started out with Romex and, you know, it's easy to do and you actually learn from it. You know, you got to start somewhere, I guess, you know, and everybody does. So hey, hey, it's, hey, Brian, it's fun. Yes, sir. Guys, like, do you tell, tell us about, tell us about guys getting into the industry, like to come on your crew. Okay, talk to us about that. Like guys that are coming in, they come on your crew. Young guy gets out of high school, gets in the union, coming on your crew. He's probably going to school at night. He's working during the day with you guys or whatever, something like that. What are you looking for in somebody or who makes it and who doesn't? I mean, tell us about it. Oh, man, that's an extremely, extremely good question because I've seen apprentices come out of the hall since 2008 that I wouldn't trust with a lunch order. But on the good note, I mean, we've, it's still it's a working man's field i mean you know a lot of people think that oh yeah i'm going to be an electrician and do nothing all day long well if you want one of those jobs you got to go to the big three you know you're going to have to become a uaw worker which we call if our union calls them uaw or you ain't working because the only thing you're doing is sitting around waiting for something to happen us we go out we pick up our jobs from the hall so do the apprentices that are going through the classes we get to go out to our job site. The apprentices, they don't really have a choice of where they're going, but they are always working. Right now we have about, I'm going to say 300 open calls for apprentices in our local that are not filled. And as soon as they come in, they can go out and, you know, they can work anywhere that they want now, you know, get any type of experience that they want. Okay, but who are the ones that make it versus don't make it? What are the ones that, what are the ones that make it bring to the table versus the one that, that does it? You gotta want it. Like you gotta really want it. That's what it is. We're speaking to the guys that come out now, like they're listening right now, or their parents are, and they're coming out of high school, and they really don't want to go to college, but they want a good career that pays a lot. Everybody wants toys. Tell yeah, tell, tell the I, listeners what you need to do. That young guy, what he needs to do to come out to make it with a gang like yours. Come out with a positive attitude, and always be willing not only to catch the ball but always throw the ball, which means you're getting involved in the discussion of how we're doing the work plan or the safety plan. If they have any concerns that may think that they're not safe on the job or they're not doing something safe or they're not doing something right, us as journeymen are there to help them and correct them and teach them and guide them down the road to make sure that they're going to know what they're doing in future and future endeavors that they're going to be across because you know we we move around we're we're moving on constantly we are not in the same four walls every day for 365 days a year we're so constantly gotta, moving to get, constantly gotta, moving to different job sites you gotta be showing constantly up moving. paying attention paying attention learning all the time asking questions when the time is right staying off their cell phone have good attendance is that what we're talking about and, and you got to want it. You got to be a hard worker and you got to want it because every one of you guys know that if you really want to make it in life here or there, you got to you got to really put forward an effort you know, right, and make these people actually want to. Give, give me an idea of the pay scale, Brian, up there with it, with IBW. Let's say someone, let's say a two-year apprentice and they give me a journeyman roughly, you know, and that's going to go with hours and all that. But what's what's the pay scale? I know you've got that broke out in the union. Oh well, now you gotta catch me off the guard here now since I'm roughly, a local roughly, guy, but, roughly, uh, roughly. Just, You're not speaking no, for I'm, any any particulars. Well, we just had a raise on our check, which was a dollar ninety. This is the first raise out of our three-year contract that we voted on. Right now, our pay scale is sitting around forty-four seventy-three an hour, and we will top out after the third year at forty-seven dollars an hour, and then we're up for another negotiation contract after that. But this is not, this is just the hourly on the check rate. This is not including your health care that you get after 90 days. This is not including your uh, your pension that you put into. You're putting your own money into it. Your companies are matching what we're putting in. 
We have companies that are matching all the way up to 10% of what you put in, that they will match on your annuity. Guys that come through the electrical apprenticeship program, they get another annuity because they've got a NECA contractor's uh, certificate now, you know, that's which is a little bit higher graded than an ABC, but, you know, it's still, you know, it's a NECA rated contractor license now, you know, so they're giving you that certificate that you took their course through their accredited program and now you get that and i mean there's you know we don't get uh holiday pay you know uh vacation pay we put in on our own you know we can decide how much in a percentage that we want to put away every week going into that fund which we get two payouts every year which is around uh mother's day and then also thanksgiving so it's always good for christmas I always used to not only tell my wife about one, but you know, not the other. <laughs> you know, out. And then if we work, you know, just that vacation pay of us putting in ten percent could be up towards towards four to five thousand dollars. You know, and they they make a little bit of money off of it, of course, to run the fund and you know, guide with everybody because we have about forty six hundred members here in our local right now and we have open calls. You can walk in tomorrow and you can get a job tomorrow. Over time, do y'all get much over time? Well, here lately, here I don't know what it is. Uh, ever since, but ever since 2016, uh, things have really been rolling in this area. A lot of uh, restrictions have been uplifted, which uh, opened up a lot of work for us. Right now, like I said, we have uh, FCA. Uh, they're building the MAC project right now, which is a 43 billion dollar project. That's a B with a billion, so that's a lot of work. Uh, I'm on my second building there. Uh, each building was over. 20 million square feet of working lines. I wow. did all of the power for all of their lines there at the body shop. Right now I'm at the paint shop. I have friends that are over in the assembly area and that actually emptied out our hall altogether. Everybody's working, even including apprentices, all that other stuff. We've got another one that's uh, Warren, Warren paint, still another FCA uh, job, but that's over, uh, just a little bit away from us. So back to, back to the apprentice, a, you just mentioned the apprentice. So what are these guys that are getting paid to go to school, getting all these benefits? What what are they making? Out of the hole, first coming out, first punch is seventeen fifty per hour. Boom. Ninety after ninety days, you're getting your insurance, all that other stuff, mm -hmm. and you're going to school one day every two weeks. And of course, there's a lot of contractors that don't really pay for them or you know cover them for that day anymore. But there still are a few. If you and if the contractor really sees that a person is putting forward the effort, you know, the want to be there, the want right. to learn this trade, and to want to exceed in this trade, a lot of people see that. The old school people can see that in a heartbeat, and then you know you get a little bit more leniency on top of that. And then a lot of people start covering you know the good ones, you know, and make it worth their while. All right, so we go through the master. So do y'all have master electricians for the IBW up there, or? Is well, this is a is it... local. We, we don't even you accept don't even have... actually okay. masters, you know, because everybody's still all the same. We are, yeah. uh, we're, we go under a tools list. We bring a certain number of tools that we're allowed to do. Anything else is contractor supplied. Uh, everything thing we have to do is go up, take the safety orientation, <laughs> abide by all that, and just keep running. Okay. That's about it. So, looks like Jimmy might have found a uh, hot spot there. He just disappeared. And he's out. Oh, and then he disappeared. Yeah, all of a sudden you said his name and he ran out. Hey, uh, so, Brian, you mentioned paint booths. Are you, you said you're, you're building paint booths. Are you doing any of the control work with those? I just started, we just started servicing them. That's the only reason I'm asking. We're doing a lot of service on paint booths now, or we're trying to, I should say. Right now, I'm doing all the robot locations and also tray for that to come down through. But uh, yeah, there's this, this entire building. It's it's amazing the automation hey, uh, hey, and also the controls in this type hey, of building. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? I'm home. I'm home. I'm muted, Jimmy. I'm muted, Jimmy. It sounds like a religious experience there or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I haven't heard this much racket since I was trying to buy my Jelly Belly Jelly Beans at Virginia Beach. Oh, man. <laughs> that was a religious experience as well. <laughs> and we got it done, though, right? We did. We, we did. found yeah. Jelly Beans. Jelly Bellies. <laughs> yeah. where, where are y'all finding your people at, um, Brian, as far as, you know, you, the people that are entering the field? Actually, right now, we're we're empty. 
we are totally empty. We can't get can't people get in. We can't get people that want to work. We can't find travelers even to come in. There's there's so much so much going on right now in the nation. It's just incredible, and our field is just exploding. And I'm glad to see it finally. I'm glad to see we're finally all getting paid what yeah. we were really supposed to be paid. A lot of us took a bite out of a shit sandwich there for a lot of years. And now at least it's coming around and it's coming back in our favor. And strong. I'm happy to see it. And I'm happy to see everybody actually benefit from it. I agree with that uh, 100%. We're having the same issues um, down here at Virginia Beach, Tidewater area. Sa same issues. Dave's in Delaware. I'm sure he could say the same. How, how do you break through that? I mean, how do you get through to the folks this is that, uh, you know, to say, hey, want to work, make something of yourself, create something? Because once you create something, man, the the, uh, the reward from that, you, you can't match it. How do you how do you push through to those folks? You got it's it's kind of almost like a social issue that you got to break through. I think that's what we're doing on the show. I think it's not more than a social issue. I think it's just an upbringing issue. You know, they haven't seen you know their parents get out there and absolutely bust their ass to make their you know life the way that they grew up in. You know, a lot of people are not getting that type of experience coming from single parent homes and the work ethic is just slowly fading year by year by year still, you know, there's, you know, I, I don't want to say, you know, like we're bringing up a bunch of millennials, but damn, we actually are. And I mean, they, like I said, you got to want it in this life. If you want something, you can take it. You can have it. Everybody can do it. Anybody can do anything that they want to do as long as they put their mind to it. And that's what my dad always told me. You know, I didn't want to be anything special, you know, and I didn't find electrical work. Electrical work found me. So you know, that's what makes you know the what, difference. Brian? Brian, you know what I've found out with electrical work? You know, I'm, I'm a refrigeration guy, but I have my electrical license here in Delaware. Uh, but you know what I found out with electrical work? When, some, when I meet somebody, they say they're an electrician. It could mean anything. Okay, first of all, it could mean a guy on the back end of a right angle drill pulling Remex in the house. It could mean a guy bending pipe. It could be an instrumentation guy, or it could be a controls guy that really knows how to use his meter, okay? Because sometimes you meet these guys that are really good residential guys, and I only know this because I know they've wired some of our stuff. But we have a, we have a rule in our company, before you start anything up, you check the voltage to it, okay? It's just, it's just the way it is. Because some guys just don't know how something's supposed to run, and they may be used to something else, whatever. But, but... The one thing I've always found out about electricians is there's so many different avenues you can go down. It, just because you have an electrician that can run Romex doesn't mean he's a guy that can really use a meter and understands what's going on. Like, you know what I mean? Like control wise or something like that. So uh, guys like you, I mean, you sound like a career guy. I mean, I, I admire guys like you. I'm not sure I'd want to be an apprentice under you, but <laughs> 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 I have been known as an apprentice killer, but that's all for, that's all I for think, a reason. I think, I think, I think you were the basic training of, of for apprentices. What do you think, Chuck? Well, I'm uh, wondering. I I would bet. I'm hoping I'm right here that uh, Brian has some proud moments in his uh, apprentice training. Some folks that he brought along that uh, are doing great, and he might. Hold the hold the key as far as what turn them on to it. Hey, hey, Brian! Before you answer this, I want to tell you something. If you look to Chuck's right, and the third shelf up, that <laughs> cover is all about electricity. That's it. That's my. <laughs> that's basic electricity. Oh, the couch, the couch, the back of the van. <laughs> Jimmy, you there? Jimmy's gone. Oh, Unmute, he's Jimmy. Muted. Hey, am you I there, back? Yeah. He's yeah. home. I'm home. No, he's probably in somebody else's home. He's not even in his own home. No, I'm I'm home. I'm home. Can Can you guys hear me? We got you, Jimmy. You we got much you. better. Sorry, you know I I do this once a month for city council meetings. I still hadn't figured it out. So yeah, Jimmy's an elected official. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forgot to announce that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I still haven't figured out Zoom meetings. Well, so. <laughs> well, we avoid politics here like the plague. Oh, wait yeah, a minute. You should. The plague yeah, is yeah, we, yeah. 
No, no political discussions here. We're just trying to <laughs> we're trying to get kids into the field, yeah. not Jeff, not Jeff, scare them Jeff, away. Jeff hey. tried to preach it one night. We wouldn't let him. We shut him down. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I stay away. Um, I heard a lot of what you guys said, and uh, uh, what I what I found. Uh, one gentleman. Let me see. Why well, I don't have my glasses on, Brian. Seventeen dollars an hour. You're starting people out at seventeen dollars an hour, and I don't know how it is up there, but you you couldn't get kids to work at seventeen dollars an hour here, Dave. I think when I started out, I made four eighty five an hour in Delaware, and uh, you know you, you got to dig in, you got to learn it, you got to go with it. But if you're digging in making seventeen dollars an hour, you can't make it. Hey Jimmy, you, you you did better than me. I started for for Uncle Clyde at two fifty an hour. Two fifty. Two fifty an hour. I mean that was right after the depression though, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And that was right after the wheel was invented, Jim. Right after they invented the wheel. That was right after that. Well well, Dave, I got four eighty five cream rises to the top, you know. <laughs> I, I, I remember I busted my butt for years and years to make fourteen dollars an hour, and I was happy as could be with that. And now he's making sixteen. <laughs> now I'm making twelve dollars an hour. <laughs> yeah, he's defining his uh, proper uh, hey, compensation. I just want to say for everybody that doesn't know, we got a guy behind the curtain over. When you hear a voice and nobody's lips are moving, you see the hand. Show me the hair. Hand. Uh, that's IT. Okay, that's IT back there. He doesn't like to show his face because he's pretty, but <laughs> he's back there talking. I don't want to embarrass Dave. <laughs> hey, Ken, let me just tell you this. In another 40 years, he's going to look a lot like Chuck. That's all he's only talking <laughs> Don't you put that curse on me, Dave. <laughs> yep. It's going to look good. Gonna look really good. That's my I, son. I, I would just like to say that I started my business on six thousand dollars because I blew every penny I had when I was a kid. And after twenty-two years, I think I got seventeen dollars left. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's double digits. That's a lot of McDonald's, man. Hmm. Life choices, Brian. Um. Uh, be quiet for a minute. Let's let's get back to you. Uh, you got a little. Those lights are kind of killing us. You got to sh shining us straight up at your lights yeah, there. Brian, that's his halo. Hey Brian, Sorry, keep there. your head right where it is right now. Yep, you that's good. Everything. Okay. I'm trying my best. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yep. but with the, with the apprentices though, I mean, you can you can really tell if they want it if you just hammer them with the basic questions. You know, just start out with your basic stuff with testing them. Give them a little bit of incentive to, you know, that, hey, these questions are on the journeyman's test and you're going to be hearing these again. So let me teach you them and why they're there and what they're for. And then, you know, maybe a couple of weeks will pass and I'll ask them more questions about the same subject, but in a different manner and to actually see if they're paying attention. So that's one thing that I can or one way that I, you know, can really determine that if a person really wants to be in the field and if they really want it and they really want to make this a career decision for them. That and how fast they walk to the truck for parts. <laughs> yeah, that's true too, you know, but knowing the parts is better than not knowing and, well, you know, at least you're coming back with the right I didn't stuff. say they came back with the right one, but at least if they walk fast. <laughs> well, as long as you're not setting them up for a canoe valve, you're doing pretty good. Wire stretchers, man, just wire hey, stretchers. Brian, what uh, Brian, what were you like as an apprentice? I, when I showed up on a job site, I picked out the oldest guy that was on the job. And I said, you are my partner. And I partnered up with them and I did most of the work. Yes. Because I wanted to learn what these old timers actually had, you know, going on and how, what their tricks of the trade were and doing, you know, little bitty things, you know, that makes, you know, everybody's job easier. You know, it's just, it was just the way I was. I was, I was brought up, you know, with my dad, with old school people with, and he was a, a gear cutter, you know, nothing, 
involved with what I've had going on, you know, and I remember when he retired, the day that he retired, he was a, a gear cutter for a, a company called Taylor and Gaskin here in Detroit. And my mom was also still working. And my aunt Z was also over at the same time. Now my aunt, she's another union person. She's actually one of the first people that started out the Meat Packers Association, which is nowadays the uh, United Commercial Food Workers Association. Sure, sure. And we're all in the driveway and my dad had his check and I looked at it and back in 82, it was like 1350 an hour. And then my mom really had good. hers. Yeah. And my mom had hers and it was about the exact same, you know, and this was my second year of being in into the union and our rate was at like well, 2750, you know, and then I showed them my check and the look on both of their faces, I can tell <laughs> right there is that was probably the proudest moment that I made both of them feel because, you know, I surpassed what they did. You know. Hey Brian, have you? I got a question for you. You there? Uh, Faces are moving. That was the actual. Sure. This is kind of a side question, personal thing. Have you ever like wired up a Bob Seger concert or anything out there? Actually, I was also in a band back in '84, and I've done quite a few concert gigs there. And at being six foot four from the Detroit area, yes, I am a concert security bodyguard also. <laughs> I'm a big Bob Seger fan, and every time I see somebody from Detroit, I want to know if they know. Well, I have that. I've had my Bob Seger moment, and it's not a good one to tell you the truth. It really isn't. Tell me what it is. Don't let me down. Okay, all right, all right. I'll tell you real quick. We were all hanging out on the street down there. This is when we were younger, and of course, we all liked to drink real heavily back then. And uh, actually, my brother Curtis's is. is it wasn't his wife. It was his girlfriend at the time, but her niece knew Bob Seger's niece, and then he was going to come and pick them both up and take them out to dinner. So that was cool. You know, everybody's hanging out, you know, just waiting around. All of a sudden, here comes this limousine, you know. They get out. They're taking pictures and all this, left to right. You know, everybody's just talking, you know, having a fun time. And here comes this little girl. She was about eight years old, and she had a Bob Seger silver bullet still in the plastic. She went up to him and asked him to sign it, and he denied her doing it. Oh, man. And we kind of went off the wall on him a little bit there, and we were kind of calling him Dicky Bob Seeger and all that good stuff. But, you know, hey, <laughs> keep on rocking. I don't know. Well, that sounds like it was a long time ago. Maybe he changed, too. Uh, hopefully, you know. I guess we all do. But, you know, back in the 80s, that was a different time for all of us, wasn't it? Yeah, he was probably just getting into being successful. I'm just curious. We have a, uh, a question from a viewer. So, Randy Guilford was going to try to join tonight. I guess he missed a message from me. But, um he says that he is, and Dave, you, you could help out with this too. It's probably more me and you because we're business owners. But he says that he's getting ready to test, and he'd like to know uh, any suggestions for him as far as starting his new company. Um, as far as the testing part, I assume, I don't know what state you're in, Randy, so um, I can speak for Virginia. Um, you got to have your master's, so I assume that's what you're getting ready to get. Um, I don't know, again... Your finance—I mean, your financials is number one. You got to have that in order. Uh, um, can, can I would I say. Make a suggestion. If, if you stop making that noise, you can. Uh, uh, there we go. A, take the test online. Uh, take the test on a computer. Don't do a paper test. Oh, we, uh, it's, well, depending on the state, like we have to go to a testing facility and do it there yes. on a computer. Yes. Yep. Correct. That is the same yeah, way in the state okay. of Michigan. So yes, hey, masters. Yeah. What 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 state are you in? New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, uh, I would probably, I'm sorry. I would I would probably tell him from a business standpoint. I'm just going to give you a little bit of business. But from a business standpoint, I would probably tell you this: as somebody that started a business and didn't have it, didn't. If you had six thousand dollars, Jimmy, I didn't have fifteen hundred dollars. But but, uh, <laughs> but but as somebody that started a business, all I can tell you is. Never tell anybody you're not busy, first of all. Even if right. you're not busy, go out and ride around, letter your truck and ride around and put some conduit on the top of it or whatever on your ladder and act like you're busy. And anytime every, anybody ever asks you if you're busy, you say yes. Because people want to deal with busy people, okay? If you say no, they're going to be like, oh, this guy must not be any good. Or they're going to undercut you and then they're going to want it done at cheap. Exactly, exactly. You always want to be busy. The second thing is, you always want to be customer oriented, customer service oriented, and understand that the customers you're dealing with, and if you're just starting a business, 
Don't be afraid to go pull Romex, okay? You're not going to get all these like stadium jobs and stuff that Brian's talking about. You need to go do service changes. You need to network with air conditioning companies out there that need a guy that's, that's going to respond to upgrade their services and things like that. So network with other trades, get along with other trades, refer people when you can, get good guys to associate yourself with, and always reassure your customer and always ask them if, if they're happy and then make sure they're repeat customers. Make, whatever you got to do when you're walking away yeah. from them, make sure they are people that are going to call you again. No job too small. I don't, you got it. Yeah. When you yeah. get to a point, you can start turning it down. But right now, no job too small. All of that can lead to something bigger. Everything you take, and, everything and that they, comes your way. Uh, I, I built my, my career, my business on a small clientele. Yeah. Uh, I take care of the people I do. They know me. They know they can call me. And that's something you always, that's customer service. And that's why I was out tonight working. You know, I know these people. I see them every day. They know they call things get fixed. And you're absolutely right. Customer service comes first. Always say you're busy. Don't mind going out on weekends working. You don't start a job so you can have a uh, business so you can have off on weekends. You're going to be working weekends. Yeah, if you're, but that, that, add, add, add emergency. Here, here. You'll pick up a lot of work. Take an emergency. There is no listen. That guy. That guy. I'm sure you're listening right now. Forget about the word weekend. There is not yeah. going to be any word weekend. You're right. I went to business when I was probably 24 years old or something, and for the next 15 years there wasn't wasn't a lot of weekend. I mean, I was always there were some some fun times in there, but I was always on a pager. I was always responding to somebody. And the, the other thing you want to make it. Always make it look easy. Always make it look simple for your customer. And always make it look simple for them. Make it look easy and never, never talk about your competition. Just go there. Never. If they start never. to tell you a story about somebody else being there, you just turn it off and you just go do your thing and make it look simple. The more you make it look simple, the less stressful it is for them, the more they're going to call you back. And keep in mind, you never know what the competition and the customer talked about. Right. And then the customer might get mad and want your opinion. Just uh, just tell them how you would fix it. Don't say anything they done bad because you don't know what they talked about. That customer might have told exactly. him to run it like that, to do it like that. Right, right. Uh, uh, just hold yourself to a higher plane. I went out on a job today, wanted a second opinion. Some the install look great. It's manufactured housing. It's going to get hot. It's hot time of the year. Nothing you can do. It's going to run all day, catch up at night. Uh, the, and the install was top notch. I told the guy, I said, he didn't do anything wrong. I don't know what was here before. I don't know what y'all agreed to, but everything he did was fine. Uh, and I work well with other contractors, other heating and air refrigeration contractors. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to get all butt hurt over somebody trying to make a living. You're all in it together. You can help them out. They can help you out. And, you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate being able to call another contractor when I'm on vacation and he'll go do it for me. And I would do the same for him. You're all in it together. Just do the best job you can do. Every, every single customer you get for that guy, what was his name, Dan? For the guy that wrote the note, every single Randy, customer. Randy. Randy. Hey, Randy. Every Randy. Every single customer you do a job for, it. and like Jeff said, I don't care how big or how small. I don't care if it's changing their filter or wiring up a new electrical panel, whatever it is. Every single customer, you literally have to do a checkbox before you leave them, and make sure they would use you again. This is how you build a business. Would they use you again? Okay. Are they satisfied and are they reassured? You will not always tell a customer what they want to hear, but you better tell them something. Okay. You better tell them something. That's, that's the bottom. That's called reassurance. You may not have that part. You may not be able to get that breaker, that main breaker, or whatever in, in the electrical field or in the refrigeration air conditioning. There's certainly a lot of parts that you can't get a hold of readily. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get any breaker right, right now, but... You're running the problem. <laughs> but the one thing you want to do, I have, I have a saying, you call the customer before they call you. If somebody's calling you up and blowing your phone up about where their stuff is, then you're not calling you. You're better off calling them. You call them, that's reassurance. They're going to feel good about it, and, and then it's all going to be fine. Yep. Referrals yep. are gold. Referrals uh, what, are gold. 
Yeah. What you yeah. said, Dave, yes. communication, that goes to every aspect in life. I have found that out being, being an elected official. If you just talk to people, they're a lot happier. If you ignore them, they get mad. It's, it's communication. Yeah. And it's same when I call and have a problem with the Internet. I want somebody to yeah, talk to. You're a to customer. That. You're a customer. And that goes right back to the people coming in the field. Same thing. If, if you're Brian's apprentice or whatever, or you're working for Dave, Absolutely. whatever everything is, you need to question. I mean, at the time, if you're told, hey, get on the other end of that and pull this, or, or you're told, put those wires there, that's fine. You do it. Then you say, why? After you go to lunch, you go after the job, you say, hey, I noticed this. Why? Learn why after the fact. Do the job, learn, then learn why. Jeb, Jeb, you hit the nail on the head. You young guys out there that are coming into these trades and are listening to this, or you parents out there that are trying to pat them on the butt and point them in one direction, I want to tell you something. Have them come on the job, do whatever's asked. And by the way, and I'm not trying to reminisce because I didn't walk through four feet of snow or anything like that when I was young. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to tell I you, did. I'm going to tell you this. I know whatever Brian went through as an apprentice there – isn't the way an apprentice goes through now. There's just times have changed and everything. But but what I want to tell you is this, you go out there as an apprentice or a helper or whatever, we call them helper in refrigeration, but you go out there, you do what's asked of you during the time, you write the questions down and you ask the guy driving back to the shop that night, okay? Don't bug him while you're out there. And every single box you take something out of, if you're taking a control out, if you're taking an expansion valve out, if you're taking a breaker out, a contact or a coil, whatever it is, every single one of them has a set of directions. And in those directions, there's all sorts of information about that, that, that component, all sorts. And I used to sit there at lunch, you know, before I went into business, and I would sit there at lunch when I had these, I would, I would save these things and at lunch I would read them. I would, hey, how's this thing work? How's this thing work? How's this thing, but never on the job. You gotta be ready to work on the job. But if you get, if you're out there listening and you're a young guy and you want to get into a trade, like we're talking about electrical, micro, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's plumbing, refrigeration, heating, air conditioning, whatever, automobile, I don't care, name one. Okay. The guy you're paired with can either be your best asset. Okay. Or he can just be a pain in the butt to you. And if he's a pain in the butt to you, you're looking at it wrong. You need to look at that guy you're paired with as your degree. That's where you're getting your degree from this guy and it's so much information when you're paired with them but make sure make sure you understand that while you're doing something sometimes they don't have a time, a time to explain this to you okay it might be later on so ask them the question later i don't know many guys in this trade that aren't happy to answer those questions later on i know many of them when they got six calls seven calls 15 service calls behind them and they're hanging on the side of a roof and they're trying to get a pulley onto some rooftop unit or something and they got their for blowing up or whatever they really don't want to answer it right then okay but they will answer it eventually so write those things down and with that hey, so dave well but wait a minute go ahead, go ahead yeah we got like two minutes it's time for the p word dave oh yeah here we go <laughs> this is it My favorite part of the show this is it <laughs> we're the p word passion so if you are not if you're in a job, you know, find your way into a, uh, a trade and you are not outside of that eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever you're getting paid for, thinking about how to improve in that trade, you may it's not probably not your place. trade. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Bingo. Bingo. So that would be how you could identify if you're in the right place for you. And if you're in the right place for you, you are looking at those questions. They're, they're in your head. You are looking for how to solve them outside of the day. And if you're out to dinner at night, if you're out to dinner at night, Chuck, and mm -hmm. you're looking up in a building and you're seeing how the conduits run, <laughs> yeah. the restaurant, and you're seeing how the air conditioning vents are put in, then you love the trade you're in and you have the passion. Once you have the passion for it, that's what carries you into it. It shows. That's it. You know, and Dave, that I, I was sitting in a place the other day and water was dripping off their duct. And, 
and I, I told them, I said, guys, you have an airflow problem. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, hey, went you back two weeks beer. later, you know, uh, water dripping off. And I know that the air conditioning company taking care of it. You got an airflow problem. You know, you just sat there and noticed that you got water dripping down on your table. You're going, you got an airflow problem here. <laughs> And you just shake your head, but yeah, you think about it all the time. Yeah. And it's it's not that's not bad. You kind of enjoy it. You mm -hmm. kind of enjoy hard problems. You kind of enjoy solving it in your mind. Um, I, I I don't know, if you, Dave. I know we're friends on Facebook, but you know I love Columbo, and I'll tell people we got we got Columbo this style. Let's get on it. <laughs> and it's fun to solve problems and, and fix stuff. It, it's fun. Uh, every once in a while, you're going to have something to hurt you, but you're going to learn from it. And it's not going to hurt you again. That's right. Um, and we and are at time now, fellas. It has been a pleasure. Um, I'm going to let y'all kick it off one time. Uh, basically, I think Jimmy just did have a nice little closing. You have fun doing what you're doing. You're fixing yeah. shit. You're figuring it out. You no, feel accomplished. I'm, and then you sit on that couch at the end of the day, and then you get back no, on your phone. I'm, and I'm, talk I'm about going more back work. to this walk-in to there make sure it is down to temperature before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. go. I'm getting up tonight. <laughs> I'm not getting up. He's still got the passion. Brian, it, Brian it, on it's your a block side. away. I could walk to it if I had to. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian, Brian no Rooks, <laughs> what would you like to get out, Brian, before closing as far as uh, people? You just said y'all need people bad. Here's your plea. Bag them. Tell, tell them what they need to do. Y'all need people, and you're getting – you might still be big, but you're getting a little old be pulling on that stuff, so – Preach. That's for sure. This Preach. will also this will also tear a hole in your body here. This trade is very hard, and you're going to work hard. And but the one thing you're going to do is you're going to go home with a satisfied feeling on your face because you know that you did a good job for the people. Uh, get out there and just uh, go to your locals, your local uh, IBWs. You can uh, sign up for their programs. Most of it's online. Matter of fact, it's just like ours here in Detroit. It's the first Tuesday of every month at eitc.org. That will get your application in to be selected for the apprenticeship. If you got what it takes and you think you can really make it, and if you want a different avenue instead of taking this college degree, whatever you want to call it, with a whole bunch of wasted money on the other end of it, you can go ahead. But in the long run, you're really going to work out and you're yep. going to find yourself doing things that you really want to do in the trades right now because we're we're in real short shirt shortage right now you know our local just alone uh 40 percent of our people are going to be retiring here within the next five years that's not, not included wow. but the three and a half percent growth every year of our of the business itself so there is going to be a massive shortage of electricians and it's just going to keep driving the price up for all of us we're yep. going to ride this wave out as long as we can i got about five more years before i retire hopefully that'll happen but what I want to leave you guys with is everybody go out there, work your hardest as you possibly can, work safe, make sure everybody is safe on the job site, and uh, God bless you guys. Okay? We appreciate you, Brian. You seem like a bundle of knowledge on that stuff. We, we definitely appreciate you. Chuck, any infinite wisdom with all those books behind you? <laughs> all these leather-bound, leather-bound books. Totally fake, by the way. But uh, anyway... Uh, great show. Uh, we didn't get to so many of the aspects of it that we would like to, but uh, uh, sure appreciate uh, you you guys for coming on. Yeah, I just want to <clears throat> I just want to say thanks to Brian. It was great meeting you, Jimmy Don. Good to see you. Thank both these guys, both true professionals. And if you're out there listening about the trades, I mean. Uh, I hope that you'll consider some of these trades because they're a very good alternative. If you're not ready to go to, you know, if, you're, if you don't have a professional thing in mind, going to college, this and that, the trades are a great alternative. They're, they're a great paying alternative. And uh, there's so many different opportunities. You guys are, are living proof of that. And I appreciate them coming on. Awesome. Jimmy, we appreciate you jump, jumping in. Looks like you might be having technical difficulty there. <laughs> Uh, and for, for me, I just like to say I started in electrical and then, you know, that opened up so many doors between refrigeration, cooking equipment, lighting. I mean, 
once you learn controls electrical i'm just gonna tell you that i mean i went from uh digging ditches to uh you know i've got a crew of uh you know i've got 15 employees now you know we're doing a ton of business i i need more you know we all need more people um if there's anything in particular you're you're interested in i say go with it it'll lead to many different avenues and that's where i'm at so with that we're going to wrap this show up and see y'all next week tuesday eight o'clock blue collar